There are many faces of humanity, and we have many ideas and thoughts. In the 21st century, our social media technology is robbing us of reason, debate and critical thinking. More and more we see that we are at war with ourselves. Mythologies is a space where we can consider different ideas without becoming fractious. Welcome to Mythologies by Jack Adams. Welcome to the freedom to disagree respectfully. Introducing a conversation with Simon Roper. Simon Roper is an archaeologist with a fascinating YouTube channel about the old languages of England. Toponymy. And, toponymy. and as I understand it, toponymy, as, as I was told, toponymy is a really difficult subject because English place names contain so many languages. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and the, in the study of toponymy, there are probably, this is what I was told, there's probably less than 10 experts in our country. Because there's... I believe that, yeah. There's... there's probably four or five that actually have the capacity to command the linguistic range that's required to properly study this and i was yeah. told you've got to understand some welsh you've got to understand some roman latin church latin um saxon all the languages you understand but then you've got all the the dutch that comes in you've got middle english uh, you know and the, the list goes on and once you actually get yourself a a good dictionary and you start uh, to look at the source of words you suddenly find that the English language is absolutely filled to the gunnels with other languages it is yeah yeah I mean I know from the stuff I've seen that you've done on your wonderful you know on your wonderful videos I really love them Keep but going. the stuff which is reenaction uh, reenactment of the small Saxon villages living in that you're absolutely embedded within the life and death realities. You know, I can't imagine there were many vegetarians during Saxon. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you know. the, the supplements might have not, not have quite been up to it at that point. But So what are the great Saxon words for the, the names of places then? Um, you get various elements. So you, you get... Um, uh, the names of plants and particular trees and things like that and then you, you you generally get a suffix like i said tun or dawn or um uh, hlau or haur haur is manifested in the modern word harrow and i think that was actually a um a pre-christian um term meaning like a, well there's a there's a few different interpretations it could mean a kind of temple or an altar um, or something like that in modern terms um and stuff like that you get you get um boor which is uh, cognate with the modern word barrow or the ancestor in the modern word barrow and that meant obviously a, a hill often a man-made hill to signify somebody had died but I, th I think it could also mean a natural hill um and like personal names a lot of the time they're they're kind of i suppose you might call them diathematic so it's like something like birch hill or you know when you oh, said, I'm sorry to interrupt, but when you said right. diaphragmatic, di diathematic. So two, what does that mean? Two kind of morphemes or two words incorporated into the name. So like Ashton, for example, is the town, and ash trees, mm -hmm. um, and things like that. Um, although it, it's it's hard to know how connected to that or how much people would have thought about that, even while it meant something, because you can imagine. Like even nowadays, there's a town near me called Petersfield. It's about 40 minutes away. And I don't think of it as being Petersfield, even though that's perfectly modern English. I just think of it as being a place where, which I have certain associations with from when I've been there. Like most of the time, it doesn't occur to me that it's Petersfield. So whether that would have had meaning to people at the time, yeah, beyond, it, you know, of course, if they thought about it, it would have had meaning. But whether people would have considered the meaning most of the time, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, I, I think I cited to you also the idea of Oxford, which is yeah, an yeah. interesting one because because Oxford is, I think it's the third most known brand name in the world. Really? Yeah, no. In the university? 
yeah, yeah, because it's I don't I don't know why, but as a brand name, it lists it it lists just below Coca Cola. Do you know, like it's ridiculous. Really? Yeah, and and yet that that's a prime example, isn't it? When when you say Oxford, people think universities, they think English establishment, they think uh, there's a whole load of things that they think maybe maybe they think punting, they think all of these things yeah. before they get. To, anywhere close to an idea of a muddy ford across a river or, or across which oxen were herded well i i, I told i was t- explaining it to my sister recently in one of one of her occasional occasionally she'll just become interested in something i've said <laughs> not, not very often but very yeah, occasionally yeah. she'll ask and i i said well think about uh, if there was a ford where ox oxen were crossing what would you call that and she said ox ford and I said, well, there you go. And she thought about it for a second. She thought, oh, I'd never thought of it like that. Is that really yeah. how where it comes from? And it's it's clear enough when you look at it r- written, but you don't, like you say, you don't consider it because we have all these layers of associations built up. Yeah. And it's well, I think it's the same with the same with the, the experience of being in a place. Like a lot of us would probably admit we live in relatively boring places by maybe other people's standards. I certainly live in a very boring place um, by if I came here having never been here before, I'd think it was quite boring. Maybe not if it was a bit more rural, like more rural areas are lovely, but I have so many layers of associations built up onto it that I don't find it boring because it's got emotional residue, you know, mm, and that kind mm. of thing, of things which might, might in itself be flawed. But, but yeah. Well, I, I, I've got several books on topology because I became fascinated by it. And I became fascinated by it when I was in Australia because I was in Toowoomba, I was with some of my indigenous friends, and um, the, one of them said, oh, there's Turtle Mountain. Mm. And me being the most stupid idiot of all, I said, oh, sure. I said, why is it called Turtle Mountain? <laughs> and the bloke looked at me and said, look at it, Jack, it just looks <laughs> like a turtle, doesn't it? <laughs> I like that. You know, but... but well, you expect I've... some deeper... And deeper explanation <laughs> I, was, I was looking for something that just wasn't there it just looked like a turtle <laughs> but but beyond that sort of immediate foolishness um what i realized then at that point was how, in the same way that we've lost the meanings of the days of the week how far have we lost the meanings of place and that all of these places that we have in our country have uh, meanings that carry again history and mythologies and i started collecting books on toponymy and reading the subject now the one that always fascinated me and it's the one that i mentioned to you in my email the other day is islington because yeah. because islington is a place now that has a particular resonance within the popular imagination as being the home of Tony Blair's New Labour and and also the sort of the media community, the socio-political media community that live in these expensive houses that were all built in the 1850s. Um, and so Islington means that to a lot of people. But actually, this is what I've read, so I'm going to come back to you to see how, how valid this is, that it, Isla is, is a, a Saxon name. Ingas means the people... Don means hill, and what it means is, is Isla's people who live on the hill. And having lived around that particular area, what was fascinating about this revelation was that you don't n- normally think of Islington as being on a hill because because of the covering of the Victorian concrete and houses. Yeah, It's not until you actually walk up from... And, and, and normally we're driving places... But it's not until you walk from Old Street up to Islington that you think, do you know what? This is a hill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hill is hidden. So within the names, you can reconnect to the landscape. So Absolutely. you think that Islington, Isla's people who live on the hill is probably correct then? I think it's hard, it's hard with um, Tun and Dun names because you can you have Tun, which is um, town or kind of enclosure, and then you have Dun or Dawn, I, I can't remember which one, which is june or hill it's related to the modern word june um, and those get mixed up a lot in more recent times but i imagine if the, if they've got, come to that conclusion they probably looked at an older um closer to the original time period when it was named source and found that it was more likely to be 
dune or hill but but and, and also because like the turtle there was actually a hill there <laughs> there was yeah <laughs> yeah that's a, another thing is that i it doesn't normally i live around surrey and it doesn't even though there's the surrey hills and things like that it doesn't really occur to me most of the time that it's a very hilly place until you go up a certain street and it's bloody like that you know yeah and it's it's hard to drag yourself up it and then you think this is actually quite hilly now i think about it but but yeah. driving around in our cars, we're disconnect. We're again yeah, disconnected it's... from the. Ex- when yeah, I'm out walking, you know, I walk down through the fields and everything, and I look back, and I'm looking back at our village, and it's on the top of a hill. Absolutely. But we don't yeah. know it's on a hill. We don't register it's on a hill. Yeah, like walking down the high street. If I look straight ahead, I'm looking at somebody's house. I'm not looking. But, you know, even if I look slightly up, I'm looking at somebody's house. I'm not looking into the sky because there's just this massive valley in between me and what's directly adjacent to the, or not adjacent, but sort of where where the high street leads to. And it's just, well, I don't, maybe we don't even think to look great distances anymore just because most of the time we can't really see great distances. Well, we both hope that this little discussion has opened up new avenue for thought and different ideas about place names. Like the names of the days of the week, place names carry history and mythology beyond that which we also place on them ourselves. As with undiscovered nooks and crannies that we sometimes stumble across with delight, looking again at the names of towns and villages can yield surprises. Considering the meanings behind the sounds of places can open up the imagination to all sorts of precious treasures. Toponymy takes us back to our pasts and provides the opportunity to see landscapes in terms of human lives, the stories of our ancestors and the history of times long gone. In our next conversation, Simon and I will consider the mythology of place. That is to say, how we and others attach meaning to place names and turn landscape into symbology. There are many faces of humanity and we have many ideas and thoughts. In the 21st century, Our social media technology is robbing us of reasoned debate and critical thinking. More and more we see that we are at war with ourselves. Mythologies is a space where we can consider different ideas without becoming fractious. Welcome to Mythologies by Jack Adams. Welcome to the freedom to disagree respectfully.